Welcome to the first real episode of Bad Art with Sam, where we're going to go over everything that's in the technician's exam you'll be taking at the end of Radio Weekend. Relax, don't worry, and get ready to learn about waves. Before we do anything with radio, we need to know how to count. And we need to know how to count in a very specific way. SI unit prefixes from the International System of Units, or Système International de Unité, if uh, you want to go with my bad French. It's a regular system of grouping. It's straightforward, and chances are, if you ever bought a phone with 32 gigabytes of flash on it, you know what this is about. Say you have a thing, a singular thing, or five things. No need for a grouping. So you say you have one thing, or five things. If you have a tenth of a thing, you have a deci thing, or point one things, or ten to the negative one things. It has the lowercase d as a prefix, which you put in front of the thing you are measuring. If you have a hundredth of a thing, you have a cent a thing. 0 0.01 things, or 10 to the negative 2 things. You use a lowercase c. If you have a thousandth of a thing, you have a mill a thing, or 0 0.001 things, or 10 to the negative 3 things. You use lowercase m. After that part, there's a jump. If you have one millionth of a thing, you have a micro thing, or 10 to the negative 6 things. It uses a lowercase Greek mu, so obviously I have trouble writing it. After that, it goes to nano, pico, and so on. It goes on for a while. All right, now let's talk about quantities greater than one. If you have tens of a thing, or ten to the first, congrats, you have a deca thing, and you use the prefix da in lowercase. It's almost never used. If you have hundreds of a thing, or ten to the second things, you have a hecto thing, and the prefix is a lowercase h. Never use this. If you have a thousand things, or a ten to the third things, you have a kilo thing and you use the prefix lowercase k. In this direction, we also make that magnitude jump again. If you have a million things, congrats, you have a mega thing. That's 10 to the six things, and you use the capital M. We're out of big letters now. If you have a billion things, or 10 to the ninth things, you have a giga thing, and you use the capital G. If you have a trillion things, or 10 to the 12th things, you have a terra thing, and you use the capital T. Notice I'm being real coy with what we're measuring here. That's because it can really count anything. One kilometer is 1,000 meters, 23 centimeters is 0.23 meters, and 45 megameters is 45 million meters. Similarly, one kilovolt is 1,000 volts, 23 centivolts is 0.23 volts, and 45 megavolts is 45 million volts. And in something we'll cover in a minute, one kilohertz is 1,000 hertz, 23 centihertz is 0.23 hertz, and 45 megahertz is 45 million hertz. Seriously, it could be anything. One kilocat is 1,000 cats. 23 centicats is 0.23 cats, and everyone is mad at you. 45 megacats is 45 million cats, and you now need the world's biggest litter box. And that is how we count in science. Okay, so what is a wave? A wave is a regular movement of energy through a medium. Regular, in this case, means that it moves in a definite pattern. It is a movement of energy, as in the mechanical energy of my hands clapping, which causes air particles to bump together, creating acoustic waves. It also needs a medium, a substrate, something to convey the energy. With my hands, it's the atmosphere. The very paper I'm writing on can be used to convey waves. You know, like this. It could also be particles moving through the space-time continuum. How's that, you ask? Actually, you're probably familiar with it. It's light. Here, I'll draw that in now that you know what it is. So I'm going to be drawing waves like this a lot as we go through the series, so we should probably talk about what this graph here is measuring. So we've got a graph with a wave in it. The horizontal axis is time. Time only moves forward. For now. The vertical axis is amplitude, which is something we'll discuss later. It can, and generally has to for radio, move in two directions. So how do we measure it? Well, first, we need to actually count it. When a wave moves from the center to the peak, to the other peak, and then back to the center, that is a cycle, or a period. So if this wave we're looking at is happening in a single second, I can count two cycles and a little bit of a cycle I'll call 0.01 cycles. The letter we use to represent a cycle is T, but don't worry about that for now. So counting the number of cycles in our second long segment of wave, we come to 2.01 cycles, or periods, 
in a second. Believe it or not, there is an SI unit for counting the cycles of wave per second. It is the Hertz, named for a German guy who proved the existence of electromagnetic waves. The shorthand of it is HZ. All right, so it's 2.01 cycles per second. So we are counting the number of cycles in a second, or in other words, the frequency of cycles per second. So ultimately, our frequency is 2.01 hertz. So what's a different way to measure frequency? How fast do radio waves go? Actually, they go the speed of light. In fact, radio waves are also carried by the same kinds of particle as light, just with much less energy. So we have our period, or single cycle, and we know how fast they're going. From that, we can determine wavelength. Wavelength is an important aspect of ham radio, so let's get to calculating it. Waves are cool. And everywhere. Be aware. Before I move on, something I forgot to mention. That moving up and down of the wave, that's referred to as an oscillation, which is a regular transition between two states. You'll encounter that word and that effect a lot in ham radio, and we will talk about it more as time goes on. All right, we need to calculate wavelength. First, we gotta define our terms. Frequency, that thing we counted just now, is the letter F. The speed of light through air or space is represented by the letter C. And then wavelength, the distance a wave travels in one cycle, uses the Greek letter lambda, which is hard for me to draw. Frequency is still measured in hertz, the speed of light is measured in meters, and wavelength is also measured in meters because this is science. The equation is pretty simple. Wavelength equals the speed of light over frequency. And for the record, the speed of light is fixed at 300 million meters per second. Let's give it a shot. Becky wants to contact me on 146.52 megahertz. Since we're measuring in megahertz, we should use megameters. So it's 300 divided by 146.52. Let me get up my calculator. Wait, you can't see this one. All right, so phone, boring, whatever. Anyway, it comes out to 2.048 meters, which, hey, two meters is a ham band. Now, this frequency is also the national simplex calling frequency, but we'll talk about that later. In another example, you want to tune in and listen to 14074 kilohertz. Since we're dealing with kilohertz, we should use kilometers. So that's 300,000 divided by 14074, which gives us 21.316 meters. As it happens, there is also a 20 meter band for amateur radio, and this frequency is pretty popular right now. We could have also done this in plain hertz and meters, which would be 300 million divided by 14 million 74,000, or we could have converted to megahertz and do the much simpler 300 divided by 14.074 and come up with the same answer. Just make sure your units match. So the relationship, which I didn't make clear on drawing this, is as frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. Or in other words, the higher the frequency, the shorter the wave. All right, now that we know what waves are, it's time to talk about the RF spectrum. But before I do that, I gotta call in some help. Okay, so here's the electromagnetic spectrum, or at least a graph of it. Again, it's important to notice that as the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency gets larger. Right in the middle, there's visible light. I'd show you an example of that, but, well, the fact that this image is being conveyed to you is an example of light, so I think we're good to go. The wavelengths here are the size of a point of a needle down to single-celled organisms. Over at the far right end, we've got gamma rays and x-rays, and their wavelengths are the size of atoms or smaller. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got lowly radio waves. They have wavelengths from the size of buildings to the creepy space nudists, and even onto butterflies. This is the end of the spectrum we're dealing with, but it's all kind of made out of the same stuff, just with different energy levels. Now we divide the chunk that does radio into different sections people can use. And as we divide it, we divide it in several rather arbitrary ways. For example, here's a map of the RF spectrum and who it's been given to in the United States. There is no way I'm drawing this one for you, so let's just move on. Here's another, largely arbitrary way the RF spectrum is chopped up. This one is actually on the test, so let's talk about it. On this chart, we're going to focus from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. 
Remember, that's 3,000 to 300 trillion hertz. If you look closely, that's not a linear scale. The RF spectrum is broken up into eight parts, and each part is given an acronym. The last letter in each acronym is the letter F, which unsurprisingly stands for frequency. In order from lowest to highest, it is very low frequency, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, super high frequency, and I mean extremely high frequency. It needs to be said that the ITU came up with this plan back when everything above a few hundred kilohertz was considered pointless, which explains the horrendous adjective inflation we've got going on here. Who's the ITU? We'll talk about that later. So we call the lowest part of this chart audio frequencies, because if we took that signal and played it out a speaker, we'd be able to hear it. The AM broadcast band, which is still useful despite what Tesla thinks, is in the medium frequency band. FM broadcast, which is where the station you'll be taking over on Saturday lives, is in VHF. The camp radios we use? They transmit and receive in the UHF part of the spectrum. Your phones live in the upper part of the UHF band. Microwaves and Wi-Fi live in a chunk of the SHF and EHF spectrum. This is all nice, but you need to remember three of these for the test. HF is high frequency and is from 3 to 30 megahertz. VHF is very high frequency and is 30 to 300 megahertz. And UHF is ultra high frequency and lives from 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. These are where your privileges are, so they want you to know about it. Okay, so I've said RF a couple times, but what does that mean? It's actually really simple. It means radio frequency. It's anything that's radio. Okay, let's move on. Finally, here's something I didn't think I should write out. This is a list of all the frequency privileges you'll get when you pass your technician's exam. You're going to be asked about some of these privileges and what frequency these privileges are on during your tech exam. One method to get these right is to memorize this chart so you can answer by rote. If that's your game, go right ahead. However, most hams don't remember their exact privileges, which is why the AWRL has a handy and beautiful PDF chart explaining them. Becky and I have this in our shack, both at home and at camp, and the Radio Club of Tacoma has printouts upstairs. Instead, I find it easier to remember the names of the bands, and then do the math to convert from frequency to wavelength to see if I'm in the right place. We will definitely be going over this in depth during the weekend, but here it is for now. So that's it for this episode. Don't worry if it's a lot. The whole purpose of these videos is to give you a chance to watch a few times and prepare you for what we're going to teach again at camp. If you're following along with your book, this video corresponds to chapter two. And wherever you are in your studies, I am again encouraging you to try the test exam at imnotsquitting.com slash exam. It'll give you an idea of what you need to study, and it will help us focus our efforts during Radio Weekend. See you next time.